Yes, we are here. Thank you very much for joining us on the Voice of Job Seekers podcast. And you will probably notice I have an extra person with me this time, and I'll get to her in just a moment. But if you like to know more about me and the podcast, you can do a few things. One of the things you can go to iTunes or your favorite podcast directory, pick the Voice of Job Seekers podcast. Very easy to find, to find it under my name or the Voice of Job Seekers. And my special co host, for the first half of the season, maybe if I'm lucky, I can get the second half. It's almost like getting the second date, but, <laughs> but my special co-host for the first half of the season, you're going to hear on the podcast, which is going to appear in the fall, but in the video, of course, for this hour is Kirsten Gray saying, if you want to know more about her, you can go to traprecruiter.com or just follow her. She just read and follow her on LinkedIn and Twitter. How are you, Kirsten? I am good. Thank you for having me. I see that you are turned up in the evening hours. So I'm going to match your I Yeah, for some reason I am. I'm usually this cool collective dude that just comes on board mm -hmm. people with depth with information. <laughs> Tonight, for some reason, the baseball cap is the It's your fitted. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's your fitted. Yeah. yeah. And I tried to find, because I'm kind of, I'm from New York. I'm from Arlen. I'm really, my loyalty is really to the Yankees. But since I've been in Chicago for such a long time, yeah. Oh my I, God. I to, yeah, I got to represent Chicago in this particular instance. Tell me in the comments where you guys are from and you're listening, and hopefully you'll join us and join in the fun. Now, so we're doing this show about hip hop songs and job advice, and the official title is 10 Hip Hop Songs Offering the Best Job Search Career Advice. If you have some lyrics that might be career oriented, Feel free to put those in the chat. Maybe we might be able to pick those out and feature them on the show and maybe feature your name along with it too, especially if you're on LinkedIn. I'm going to try to share the actual video on LinkedIn because it only pops up when we go live and video is not as efficient as far as the streaming tool on Twitter as it is on LinkedIn. So. Here, I am retweeting it, and hopefully you guys will catch up with what we're doing. So we've gone through a whole bunch of songs, and we tried to pick out some of those that have great job search and career advice. Now, I will warn you, uh, we are devoid of some of the more contemporary artists like Megan yeah. Thee Stallion, Cardi B, and so many others that might have something that might have job advice, but for me, I'm in my 60s. Kumo D is pretty much my contemporary. <laughs> you guys could probably relate to it as well. And I know a lot of young people who actually oh, listen to old school hip hop. We don't have anything against that music. It's just that it was just easy to reference the ones that we were very familiar with. So again, we want you to join in on fun. So feel free to. You can also participate in the after show with comments or any observations you may have. You can keep commenting on thread. You can also call and text me at 708-365-9822. You can follow Kirsten, who I really want to call Kristen. No. <laughs> Chrissy. I want to call all these other names and Kirsten. Really, can I just call you KG? Is that... Yeah, that's a, that's an, that's a approved nickname. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's good. It's only because my phonetics get short after six o'clock and I'm just pretty bad. I understand. Okay. Thank you for being so understanding. So let's go ahead with the show. I went ahead and retweeted it and had Kirsten and <laughs> hopefully that you will uh, go ahead and retweet the show if you like it. That's her information on the bottom third. Again, I want to be sure. Now, we can't play these tunes because okay. YouTube will kick us off and LinkedIn will send us nasty messages. So I really want you guys just to really imagine it in your mind. Maybe you can play some of these songs while you're on your end as they come up because probably some of these you haven't heard in a long time. But one of the first yes. that I automatically thought of was my voicemail from 1992. Oh my goodness. I had, I go to work. <laughs> on my voice now. Was it not, I think it was 1991 or 92, whatever. The, I think it was 91 because I got married that year 
And I decided to get creative with that voicemail. So I put that on there as, as the thing. Well, we're keeping it PG, but I had some other, I had some other thoughts about you being newly married and telling people what y'all were doing when you didn't answer the phone. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> yeah, though that came a little bit later with a Maxwell song, but I'll let you use your imagination with that. Okay, anyway. call number one. <laughs> I go to work about Kumo D. Now, what's interesting about his bio, there's conflicting information that I've had because I know for a lot of sites, he has a BA degree. And some sites say B degree. I remember him just saying that he has a degree from Toledo College and from Manhattan. So there's a lot of discrepancy about that. But he's really big on lyrics. And I remember his philosophy was if you have to use a word twice, Go and find another word. But his communications degree dictated that in a kind of way. So I could see how that fits. And uh, the lyrics says, an architect in effect, and it slams. It was weak when I'm done, renovate and build another one. I go to work. I'm sorry, I had to say it exactly the way he did, which I thought was really cool for that particular time. Do you have any memories yourself, Kirsten? So I know this song. I was a little bit younger when it came out. But sure. the part that resonates with me today is, and if it's weak when I'm done, renovate and build another one. Like, yes, if it's weak when I'm done, yep. renovate and build another one. Like that yes. is, that's speaking to me. <laughs> that's saying to me, you know what? You did, you followed your plan. It didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to. But guess what? You know how. Now you can go and make it better. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think of the, the lyric about being an architect resonates with faith. When I was in high school, back at that time, when they had other things that was just other than preparing for state tests, we were able to take drafting. Now, drafting is like, in a sense, what you may relate to a pharmacy tech is a drafter kind of prepares the basic of the floor plans. And then the, archi ar the architect goes in and makes all of these different changes, or he may add a whole lot more detail. We think about architect, it adds a lot more detail. And it's not always great to make a career plan so detailed, but for a lot of people, that mm. really works for them. So I think if people need to do what works for them. But yeah, you do have to make a structure and know the foundation that's going to be built on to be effective. And I think that really right. makes an effective career plan. Yes. For all of you who are thinking about going into architecture, which I don't think there might be a few people who have thought about it in the past, you might want to think about how firm that foundation is going to be in the way that you lay it. So, because if you're going to renovate, we still have to have a firm, firm foundation for sure. But the other thing I thought was pretty interesting when I was looking and, and, and checking to see what Kumo D has been doing in the past few years or the past few decades, it's depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Did you know that he had a song with Pat Boone? I did not. Yes. It's called Backbone. Did he rap it, on it or did he? Yes. He, uh, it, Kumo D rapped on it. Yeah. Pat Boone actually is a good singer. Okay. And mind you, there's a whole lot of things that I'm not going to go down the road there with him that I never really liked Pat Boone for some political reasons, but not political in the way that you think it is, but musically political. But I, it's very interesting that he would collaborate with them. They're from two different generations. In fact, they might, you might want to argue that Pat Boone's like four generations removed from today's kids. So. They go, who's Pat Boone? Go look it up. Go on YouTube. Find the song Backbone. It will bring joy to your heart, I promise, in a way okay. that you thought you'd never do before. So let's go to the next one. And again, feel free, if you all in the chat are listening or somebody's listening, <laughs> feel free to put that, put your comment in. Let us know what are some lyrics that could be related to you that really resonates with you. Maybe it motivated you to do what you're doing today. So. The other one is a job ain't nothing but work. 
And I think everybody can relate to that at one point or another. Have you had some jobs in the past that you can just say that was just to get me by? At yes. Where the time? I advocate for them, especially for people who have been on the job market and maybe feeling discouraged. What's it worth? What am I doing wrong? Because it does take time. Even if you're in an optimal setting, average time you're going to be on the job market is 90 days. That's how long it takes to find a new job. So I tell people that there are a few things, your current job, your now job, your dream job, that one you're waiting on, and what I call the in-between job. And there is nothing wrong with an in-between job. Surprisingly, sometimes those things turn into our dream jobs because we're able to add our own flavor, our own seasonings. We're able to do and, and stretch ourselves in ways that the job didn't call for. And that those lead to other things. I always like to tell folks things from personal experience because Sometimes me just saying this as someone who's like the holder of the jobs kind of looked at as, well, what do you know about looking for a job? But I like to show people the things that I've been through. And there was a period of time that, that I was unemployed, meaning I was not doing a lot of consulting work and I did not have a corporate job in recruiting. And I was, and I did, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I worked at a church part-time doing the Sunday bulletin, doing light secretarial work, using my spreadsheet skills to get their membership roles in order and all that stuff and make digital media for them. And that's how I really learned how to do Canva. <laughs> and I was able to translate that into my business. And mm -hmm. I became a lot more confident in my abilities to create my own marketing materials and things like that. Like sometimes those in-between jobs, they bring out skills that are dormant or skills that you didn't even know you had. So yeah, go for it. Because sometimes a job ain't nothing but a work, but your career is a different story. And I think, yeah, I think everybody can learn from the little jobs that they had. I've done, I think I've had 25 jobs in my life. I've done work like sewage, installing really? cabinet wear, installing cabinet wear. Of course, I was more on the encourage side than actually having the actual skill to do it all. Okay. But one thing I did stumble upon when I worked at Kinko's once upon a time, that was really my first introduction. And we talked about the eighties here a long time ago. It was when I worked at Kinko's, I learned about computers and it changed my life. And learning, learning first about Mac, I was just trying to think of one of the old software packages that I used to use before Microsoft Word became a staple, or I guess the equivalent of Keynote and all those things that are on Mac. I'm trying to think of the name of the program, but I would learned a lot from those. And I actually was writing documents for people and all that kind of thing at that right. time. So that translated to the next jobs that I had for life. And that came from that one, I don't think I even got paid four dollars an hour at that particular time because I was in between career and career decisions. So it was it was a very interesting time, but it was a time to learn, time to absorb. And I think that's where people can really get and make some traction if you have some things that are around you that is that might be you not useful to you now, but it might be useful to you later. So you never can tell. Sometimes a job is nothing but work, but sometimes a job is also a learning experience and the opportunity that might fill in later on. So I admit it was well fitted. Yeah. Now, KG, he had an album back then. I think my, one of my best friends had me to buy it. It was called Taste of Chocolate. Now, you probably are too young to have it. Oh, no, I have a crush on Big Daddy Kane. Trust oh, did you? <laughs> to, to, the, to this day, I have a crush on Big Daddy Kane. So you had the album Taste of Chocolate. Notice I prefaced that you had the album Taste of Chocolate. I listened to the tape. <laughs> Yeah, the cassette tape. I get it. I get okay, it. you're not about to get me in trouble. You already got yourself in a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> I won't tell. Here's another oh. Big Daddy Kane song. It's actually Get the Job Done. I That was a typo on my part. I'll venture to fix that. But I do live, it was very contemporary at that time, a champ like Tyson 
a captain like Kirk, no employee of the Gulf Coast of Europe. I do work. <laughs> I know. Like, I'm, yeah, it's playing in my yeah, head. Yeah, you're, li you're living it out. Yeah, I can see. Go ahead, live your best life. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But I think that's where we talk a lot about work ethic, and but that's something that people are kind of tired of lecture about doing work and working hard and all that. Working hard has its place. And I assume these days everybody is working hard to, to whatever that may mean to them. That's not something for me to judge whether somebody's working hard unless they're working for me. That might be something a little bit different. But I think one of the better pieces of advice is that whatever you do, go all in at some particular point. Yeah, I have a different view on that now. I'm of the mindset of working smarter and not yeah. harder, meaning Absolutely. I don't have to work as long. I think sometimes when we say work, we're working hard, it's the amount of actual physical time we're spending in a building or in front of a, right. a piece of equipment. We may be just trying to fill some time. And I do think that breaks and rests are necessary to yeah. bring your best self to work to work. And so, yeah, I, I'm all for working smarter. Yeah. Yeah. I think, harder. but I think your point is well taken being that a lot of people think it's, I've got to the hustle culture as it's put these days where yeah. you're always working, you're always doing, you're always, and that comes from a lot from my generation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It becomes, and, and it was passed down and it, we passed it down. Yeah. And we use that as a gauge as somebody who's doing, yeah, he's working hard and has been that it really doesn't really say anything about where you are as it is working or whether in life. And that's probably sometimes that's not good, especially if you're finding that the hard work that you've done hasn't gotten you to where the promise was. And I think that's where the disappointment has actually happened is that the, I worked hard and I, it didn't get me where it got you. Or yeah. in that sense. Yeah, uh, I learned that lesson early, probably mid my recruiting career, one of, the, one of the guests that was actually on my show, on my live show a few last month, my friend Jean Wheeler, we were working towards this goal because they had just implemented the recruiters not only having their salaries, but that we would get bonuses for exceeding the goals. If you could hire 25 pe people in a quarter or anything over that, you would, it would up your bonus. Some of that was predicated on how many positions you had open, even if that was even achievable. But I remember that I was, like, I was getting my, I was getting my bonus and some, and Jean said, don't you work yourself out of a job. And I didn't, and I didn't really listen. Cause like I, I filled all my jobs and then I was bored. Oh, wow. And then they were like, oh, you don't have anything to do. So they started, they gave me more work and they had me helping out other people doing things that I didn't necessarily enjoy. So ever since then, yeah, I held on to, to some of those wrecks. I didn't try to clear, clean my slate every quarter, every month or anything like that. Yes. It's definitely about working smart and not. Yeah. And it also, it looks different for everybody else. It doesn't have to look like it has, you have to have your shirt dirty and your head sweaty. You know, do yeah. that, that people really get into that part of it more so than what it, because working smarter does mean in essence, working harder because there was preparation very often is preparation before you actually do the work and people really don't get that part of it. They think that you always have to be grinding and you can grind from sun down to sunset, but for how long? Yeah. Well, we've yeah. got a, we've got a comment here from. Well, yeah, Re flag. That's not a real name, <laughs> but has but. like has a lot of good songs. One of the ones I like that they that they put Auntie Annie up in there by MOP. I'm a huge MOP fan. Oh. Talking about negotiating and getting a, getting a bag. There are a lot of there are a lot of songs about that we can throw in. Rihanna's not a hip hop artist, but we can throw in Rihanna, or we can use the songs that she actually sampled. But we, we don't. This is a PG show, so. Oh. Those people better have your money. There's a co there's a collaboration that's coming up in in one of the songs that we have with Rihanna in it. Yeah, which 
she's a very interesting person as well. I'm really impressed by what she's done in such a young age. But one of my favorites that that read this is the Bismarcky Vapors. That's yes. probably the first real rap song that I like of the new era of that particular time. Because for me, the it started with the Sugar Hill King, Curtis mm-hmm. Blow, and a bunch of others. But then came the Bismarcky, the Vapors. There's a show in Chicago at the time. The DJ was named of uh, Lamolsky Love. Okay. And me and one of my best friends, we would we love listening to this on Saturday night because it was all the latest hip hop songs and everything. And the Vapors was one of them. We used to laugh all the time because some of the language we're just trying to get used to. We say, "What's a vapor?" And <laughs> no, that, but it does talk about the gas face. Yeah, it's like the, the gas, vapor, the by, gas by face. third base. Yeah, yeah. Like third base, the gas face. Yeah, I heard all those songs were great. And but the lyric, the part of this, it says you work for UPS. And that's like, that's job shaming. We don't do that here. Yeah, we don't yeah, do that yeah. here. Yeah, and it's funny he's to mention that because I also thought about the big song where we could distance the boots. He says UPS is always hiring. So, <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, that you know, UPS aside. So great list read, and we may have to, we, if we had time, we might come back to it, but if not, it is duly noted, sir. Yeah. So let's move on to the next song. We're done with Big Daddy King song. Right? Yeah. But this one's really simple. Y'all can laugh if you want to. About I did. One, but tell me how relevant this line actually is now. Dot collaborate and listen. It's very relevant. It's very relevant. I wrote actually uh, an article about how collaboration can advance your career, Mm -hmm. whether it's a referral or that you work on online projects with people and get them published in some kind of way. I know people who have actually worked in collaborations and made white papers that were actually peer reviewed by universities. Those, the white paper is a collaboration for the most part. For a lot of people, you have multiple collaborations, multiple authors. In fact, my son does this as part of his research with the research team he works with at John Hopkins is that they write all these papers and they get to present them because the papers represent like a project and they get funding based on their paper. I, I may be bragging about my son about this, but all this to say is that collaboration is a big part of making career advancements because that's what you do. You yep. network, you join together, get on somebody's podcast, get on someone's video show, get on the TV show or get in the media that don't stop thinking about how large your contribution can be. Yeah. I think for the most part, listening is a, also a great, it's a, the two that you really talk about. Absolutely. We know I the know ice, although people make fun of him, he's doing really well in real estate from what I understand. He has like a Yeah, he had a HGTV show, I believe. But he has a is a realty company or a company that's doing something realty. And he's got three hundred plus a person company. So good for him. Shout out to relation. Shout out to uh, Big Rob there. Now, we were just talking about Rihanna and uh, live your life in that line, never mind what haters say, ignore them till they fade away. And you know, everybody has haters. Yes. Everybody has haters, no matter on the big scale, large scale, whether it's public or private, everybody has somebody against them. And that is, it's, it's a mental exercise. And rigor at times to ignore people that who are not for you. But sometimes we do have to think about constructive. A lot of us say that anytime that we're criticized, even if it's in a way that can actually help us, we'll say, or assist us, we'll say, oh, they're a hater. So we have to be very aware of what's actually constructive. And I'm saying that constructive criticism and what's hateration in the dancery. Yeah, I completely agree. And people do have their different ways of looking at hate. Criticism, if it's constructive, is not hate. People love you. It's love in the sense that it's meant to build you up. They're just saying, 
if you take this down to rebuild it this way, it will help you, especially if somebody's coming from a place from experience and from, and have your best interests at heart. And everybody has their own barometer measuring that, but not everybody who says something critical is just being critical, critical safe, even though in this particular world, we get a lot of that. But Bob, one thing I do want to say about Rihanna is we were talking a little bit. I, I don't know too much about her foundation. It's called the Clara Lionel's Foundation. I guess it's named after one of her mother and father. But I remember back in during the hurricane season a few years back, she made $25 million ready for emergency response before the hurricane season. I thought that was quite impressive in that sense. Do you have any particular memories of this particular song or maybe anything that you need to think about Rihanna's background that might be inspiring to you? I appreciate her be pivoting her career and I know that everyone is still waiting for that. First of all, congratulations on the birth of her, on her, of her son and her pivoting her career and building a whole beauty empire and about to get her first brick and mortar store open. I'm in awe of that, of how she continues to work. Her work ethic is definitely inspiring for me. Yeah. I think a lot of the newer artists now are thinking beyond the mm -hmm. contract. They're coming up with ideas. Like I think the first one I can remember that actually came with something to the table other than just making records was 50 Cent. And yeah. when he came out with the Body and Water series at that particular time, which was quite revolutionary because we thought of 50 as being. 50 uh, cent. Yeah. Cent. But Curtis it's, Jackson has some business acumen. Yes, he has you know? some business acumen. Like he said, it's a quarter water. Put it in, but what do you say? I can't remember the how. I don't remember. A quarter well, water, remember. put it in bottles for two bucks. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's got oh, the whole. You're good. The Power series, which I yeah. believe he has moved away from, but everyone knows Power. Everyone knew Vitamin Water. Yeah. Everybody knows the story. Yeah. And everybody knows it. But I thought it was just impressive to come, said, I'm just not going to be making records. I'm going to also be a businessman right yeah. from the jump. And so, if we're going to stay there, especially with this song, T.I. can be commended for having multiple business ventures as well. I believe it's his, he and his one of his daughters that have a TV show, a cartoon. That's, oh, really? That's for, now, that you know, I didn't know. Yes, that is for, it, it's about a, a young girl. I can't ever think of the name. If anyone knows that, please put it in the chat. But yeah, so he's doing other things too. And I believe he started a comedy career. So he started doing stand-up comedy. Is that right? Oh, I've got to tell you, speaking of comedy, you just, I have a family friend, actually, because my wife worked with his mother. His name is Navarro Walker. And if you, about, I guess it might be about 10 years ago, he did this imitation of T that, that went all over the place at one particular point. I think it has a couple of million views even now. I'm not even sure, but Lavar is a pharmacist by trade. Nice. Now he's doing comedy shows with Amy Schumer and he did something with Jerry Steinfeld. And Hi. he knows like, he knew like Kevin Hart and all those guys before hand, but a shout out to, if he's watching, he appears on LinkedIn every now and then. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, he. That's a great segue into the next song, actually. Oh, yeah, it is a perfect use of segue for a lot of different reasons other than just the TI part. But uh, we won't go down old roles that particular time. But I do remember Start Hard by Drake and Pick the Lane, that's all I've ever heard. And there's argument these days about, is it okay to be a generalist or should I pick a niche? And the idea of, yeah, the niche is where the riches are. I think it depends. There's no one hard rule of whether you pick something to specialize in or whether you are able to manage several different areas. I think just go all in and master all as much as you possibly can. It's what you tend to master is going to get you, not particularly that you just pick one. I pick one because I'm just that simplistic. There are other people who do several other things and I think that's okay. Yeah, I like that because even the next verse, I'm, but I'm just trying to swerve without hitting the curve. 
He's saying, don't put me in a box. Like, I, like you worry about yourself. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And, you know, it's all good. And I like that. Try different things. I wish I had tried more things, different things outside of just talent acquisition when I was younger. I had short-term projects and I got to do things that were in compensation, got to do some projects. I did get to do some, some HR tech things as far as like picking systems, but I still stuck very close to talent acquisition because that's where I felt comfortable. I wish I had put myself out in a less comfortable thing that did not have to do any, have anything to do with TA. Right. Now, if you look at Drake's career, even before she became Drake, she was an actor. Mm -hmm. He was an actor in Canada and actually was an actor on a regular show when he was a teen. The grass. Um, yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, was, I think I saw a couple of scenes from that. I don't think I ever watched a whole episode of it. He was Jim. <laughs> that, was, that, that reminds me, I wasn't really that big. My kid, my, my boys loved Drake back in, in, when he first came out. And he's probably one of the most successful hip hop artists, arguably. Probably you have to talk about him as far as record sales of all time, because I believe he's one of the He's the only rap artist I know that's had eight number one albums that has, as far as a hip hop artist. But even though I really like his Saturday Night Live stuff, I oh, think. I watch Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I watch Saturday Night Live from time to time, but I like it when he's on because he's actually really funny. And I didn't realize he was such a versatile artist in that kind of way. So this whole rap thing don't work out in the next few years, if you know where he's at. He didn't just pick one lane himself. He was able to do several things really well. So hats off. Love don't it. hit the curve. Yes, don't hit the curve. Don't hit said. the curve. Sky's the limit. Notorious yeah. Geez. Yes, yes. When I, I was listening to... Some of his stuff was just unbelievable what he was able to do without a lot of scripting. From what I understand, he does what back in the day we used to call freestyle quite a bit. But the uh, says, <laughs> stay far from the timid, only make moves when your heart's in it. Love it. I just think that's really true. I think people are really have been seeking to look for what their hearts desire in yeah. the last couple of years. I think that really has become something. And I know that you probably have seen the struggle up front and close as being a recruiter with people, what they're all deciding to do and going through the job search process, but even more so as a recruiter in the sense of having to see it from the interview side and deciding who's best, who's good and who's not good. Yeah, there's... <laughs> Interviewing is strange now. I don't think, I think there's going, now that folks have returned to the office for even in hybrid situations or things have opened back up and people are meeting in person, I still have to think about those folks who have now, maybe their first job was in 2020 for, and they interviewed over, they interviewed bit via video, and now they're ready to move on to something else. They've been in a role for a year or two years even, and they're ready to move on that there's a difference in how we're going to be in what the workplace, meaning inside of a building leased or we're owned by a company with a company name on it, how we're, how we're going to be interacting with one another and how we're going to be collaborating with another, one another, communicating with one another. We've got a whole bunch of folks who, you know, even their internships, yeah, they have work experience, but they haven't worked in an office and now they're being called it back in or being yeah. called in for the first time. And they're like, what do you do? <laughs> what is the, I call them semi-private junior executive suites, but can you imagine if you were working from a coffee house or from an open space and now you're confined into these little boxes with felt walls like it could that could be a little daunting it could be a little shocking that used to it i know there's plenty of studies out there that say some of both that say that mm -hmm. people need that human contact they prefer yes to touch but there's the other studies too that say that all this production is happening at home. As long as there's a lot of surveillance going on. <laughs> Listen, you can surveil me if you want to, but you're going to be surprised. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a matter of interpretation and all these workplaces where you have to have fob and you have a local login with the fob mm -hmm. and all that kind of, it's crazy. It's almost nonsensical in some sense. I understand where it's coming from. People just respond to their innate need to have some kind of control is not fair to everybody. And so one person controls a whole mass of how people work. I don't think that's going to last long and people, but it keeps people like you working a lot because that means you'll be recruiting for the position in the next year and a half anyway, be with the company yourself. Yay. <laughs> Oh, well, that, that's how you make money, right? That's something that would be pretty good for your business aspect. I'm never a fan of back of just backfilling. That's a deeper problem. Well, how so? Wait, about if you're bleeding, if you're bleeding employees, meaning if all of your employees are leaving, yeah. there's a problem with the organization. If you're opening that the could... same role over and over, like if you had a role that's been all that you've had posted every couple of months, you're reposting it because someone came and started and said, nope, this is not for me. It'd be a problem, problem with the manager. That's a problem with the, that could be a problem with the manager, could be a problem with the work as well. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, again, like I said, a bigger problem. I have folks who are told, who come to me and say, I was told X, Y, and Z during my interview process with respect to their benefits or with respect to their pay and their bonuses, where those things aren't necessarily what they see. So in essence, they were job fished in a sense. I like that term. Yes. People do get job fished. Yeah. It's well, I wrote an article about that in finallens.com, okay. but essentially there's a couple of scammers have been job fishing. They've been setting themselves up as a real company and then well, lure the victims to a fake job description and yeah. position. And of course, the whole idea is for them to say, for us to pay, we need your social security number, your driver's license. Blah, blah, blah. Don't give that information. Yeah. I understand that, but that's part of the deal. But the other part is you had all the legit companies that poked say, let's, let's, we got to open up this position. Let's use this position 10 years ago, knowing that it has substantially changed from that particular time. The people right. are reading the job description and going, oh, great. I get to do blah, blah, blah. And they get there and say, we haven't quite, that's ideally what we want to do, but this is really what you're going to do. They were job fish and it's the same thing. There's yeah. really no difference. Because these people are ending up in some place. Maybe you will get a check out of it. Maybe you could say that you work for a so so company if that's your thing. But people are more interested in connecting with having the exact experience they applied for and not being wasted their time with waiting for the company to evolve after the fact. Evolve before people get there. Okay. Slight tangent, but. Like, it's like tangent, but I think it's really relevant because I think that people really want to find something that aligns and it's going to go along with their journey. Overall, people do work because companies do lie. Mm -hmm. That's not my bottom line, by the way, but it does happen. We'll talk about that another time. Everything is everything by Lauren Hill, even though the, it is hip hop. It's not rap hip hop, but it is hip hop. And it's hip hop. It's hip hop. Lauren Hill is hip hop. <laughs> is it? it is. Yeah. Do you ever listen to that? Do you ever listen to like her earlier stuff? Like with the 4G? Oh, yeah, of course. That's my era. Yes. Now, if you really want to listen to some gold, and I know this is a little bit of a tangent, but before they, what, who they were called, before they were called the Fujis? What? The translator crew. Oh. And actually, you can go on YouTube and find the song, The Vocab. It is magical. Okay. Anyway, slight tangent. But her line with love ourselves, then we can't fail to make a better situation tomorrow. So since we grow. I love that. I've always, I love the whole album. It's a very inspiring album for a lot of different reasons. But mm -hmm. I think when people have clarity about themselves, they can also manage the career and navigate the career market 
and job market better when they're clear about their wants and desires and needs. And then for me, I think it's about the seeds growing. Like, I think we want to, we have to think about it from that perspective. We put in our work, we do the things, and there's a time for planting. There's a time for harvesting. There's, but there's got to be some time in between for like Lauren said, tomorrow our seeds will grow. Like you don't plant something, water it, make sure you water it and make sure you give it light. And then yeah. just as it's supposed to spring up right away. Now it doesn't happen that way. So no, take no, it, it takes cultivating and it needs some sun and it, it needs some water. water and some you know, care. Will, sing to it. Yeah, sing to your yeah. plants. Sing to your plants. Some people can sing to their plants. Play music for them. Play Lawrence yeah. Hill. Play Lauren Hills out. <laughs> That would be a little bit better. Let's go to this next one, which I'm not surprised you brought this up. This was yours, Ladies First, Queen Latifah. Lady on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> this was Queen Latifah before she was Queen Latifah. When I get there, that's when I tax the next man or next woman. Does it make a difference? Keep the competition. Keep the competition. <laughs> yeah. People, I'm truly convinced that people, most people, don't underestimate the fact that they're competing for jobs today. You think I so? really don't. I really don't. I think most people go in and they forget they're competing. Now, they understand there's a, maybe 100 people there, but they don't know who the competition is. No, and, I'll, and, and I think that's even better because I think your competition should be yourself. Like you should be thinking about it from the, like, how can I be the best me? From that perspective, yes. But I wanted, I would be interested in, if I were looking for a job today, how people are presenting themselves. That I think is a direct competitive, there's a direct competitive. And I think there's a difference on how you're even found. I think there's a difference when somebody finds you on uh, the job board and you pass into the ATS and you get chosen. That's one thing. I think it's another thing if people heard you saw a, like a thread on LinkedIn and you made a comment that really resonated with someone that has a different reference point and more than likely you can skip the ATS process because that person. No, you cannot. Don't tell people that. Don't tell people that. It, They'll have to put your rent. Yeah. Still yeah, have I'm to going. have a record of your, no, no, stop telling people that because you're telling people, stop, stop. No, get, no, uh, there's a context to this. I'm not but you're saying, saying you have to pet, say what you just said is that you have, you can skip the ATS process. And what I'm saying is that the ATS is just, the applicant tracking system is just a database. Like it's a database. It is a repository. It is the place where we do our record keeping. So regardless of how you get in there, you have to get in there to get hired. That's fine. That's fine. But you're just saying you didn't apply. Okay. You're saying that someone I, forced I you. That you can. That's different. But I'm saying to let me reframe that. You're, yes, please. I don't, because you got people thinking that the ATS makes the you decision. Can, it does not. But no, it does not. You can capture the attention and have a different conversation from a point of contact. If somebody met you, somebody met or they met you online, or maybe they heard something if you overheard through a conversation that you had, then if you just applied to a job, solely applied through the, process, the, the application process online. Okay. I'm saying that we could start with, so I was really impressed by something you said, as opposed to you made it through the process and now uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I love your experience. Love but even if you, do. but even if you do apply, we have a lot of educated job seekers are much more educated now because there's a lot of information Absolutely. available and they can, they will come and find you or. They'll find someone that worked at your company and get to you so that they can say, hey, I like what you said on XYZ day about the E, F, and G. Or they'll follow you and they'll engage with you online. Even if they did apply online, they're still engaging in other ways. I hope they're not just 
throwing their resumes out there and then not worrying okay. about it after yeah, that. Well, I, but I think most people do though. And that's why within context of people don't think it's a competition that there's going to be other people that even if they you know people who copied and paste just like they did. Well, <laughs> there's a few hundred folks who have done that. The people who have the same experience, unless you differentiate yourself in some kind of way in your presentation, ultimately yeah. it comes out of presentation than mm -hmm. it does. And I'm not making light or trying to give people shortcuts. What I'm saying is that people need to pay more attention to how others are presenting themselves because if somebody's making a better presentation than you are constantly, then you're going to need to start presenting yourself better. Okay. That's what I'm saying. The last thing I'll say about that, LinkedIn does help you do that for as much as I can criticize LinkedIn. When you do apply for a lot, for a role on LinkedIn, or even if you just click the job, it tells you how you compare to the people who have applied to the talent pool. How many people have applied within the past X, Y, Z days? How many people have applied to in total? What their education is? Like I said, how you stack, how you're stacking up against them? What percentile based on, again, the information that is available about you and the information that is available about your competition on LinkedIn, it does give you that information. There is a way that you can position. So that's one way you can get a sense of your competition and position yourself and fill in any gaps that you feel like you may be missing. Agree. Okay. But I think, yeah. And I just to add, people <clears throat> need to present them best selves as much as they possibly can the first time around. Because a lot, most of the time, you just don't get that second chance to, yeah. to do. We are running towards an hour, but yes. we do have one more, I think. Let's go. We've got one more here. The one I don't have. I thought it was two more. We have two more. I think yeah. that, was that the two more 11 or was that? Oh, well, then we only have one more because you did the, you did both of the Big Daddy Kane songs. Right. We did the both, that Daddy Kane, we got to. Mention, and we'll go ahead. If they fall more than 10, the other ones are honorable mention. There was a group called Rhapsody that had a song named Serena. Yeah. And you brought to my, I don't remember this song for the life. Another female rapper. So and, I had to throw in some, I had to throw in some female rappers because we were heavy, too. we were heavy male. I like Rhapsody, liked her album when it came out. And in the song Serena, so every one of her songs on the album is titled after a excellent black woman. So I picked Serena because of the career stuff. So I don't know y'all, but keep trying. Life full of black diamonds. My career like Bryant's. Low start, but I go far. Got more heart than a giant. Evolve, that's the science. They'll move in silence. Love like it. lasagna, <laughs> like the G in lasagna. <laughs> no, I added that. And that part's not in there. That's my. But I like that. It, it evolved that science. I like that part. Still moving silence. I truly yeah. believe that. Yeah. I true. Do you know anything about Rhapsody? Not a lot. I do have her album. I know that she, I know her from Black Thought, from the roots. Okay. So I'm okay. not sure of the whole connection, but. One of her songs, especially during the beginning of the pandemic, one of her songs really resonated with me. She, and then she redid Public Enemy, one of Public Enemy songs. Like they all did, they remixed it. Okay. And, and her verse was probably my favorite one in it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I never, I was thinking this is, so she. It's one person. No, it's one person. She, okay. So she's, she's more contemporary than all everybody else mm -hmm. we've had on the list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I, uh, it, there's a lot of hip hop songs. I don't. There are. We've got about 18,000 on the, <laughs> in the comment section. No, so I know that by one person, no less. Yeah. Who just came and ratted them all off. I, I like, still can't. I still yeah. haven't gotten through all of them. I know. I'm looking forward to digging in until later afterwards. But uh, one more we have here. I'm glad. Uh, I, and, by the way, I know Lauren Hill this. She was first hip hop. We didn't know that she sang until late because I think when they were translated crew, she didn't sing at all. 
And oh. we didn't know that Wyclef John played guitar at all. But all of that to say is that it does help to evolve. And I think that to, to show that in your career that you've evolved is impressive to employers. So I think really we had two more, both of them by Tupac. We had uh, yeah. Me Against the World, Keep Your Head Up. Yeah. But uh, I do the whole message of Me Against the World because when you're in job search, you're getting beat up. You're getting ghosted. You, and probably the recruiters can say the same thing, right? You get beat up, you get ghosted every day. <laughs> but he, he says, the message I stress to make it stop studying your lessons, don't settle up the less. Even the genius asks these quest, questions. What? Be grateful for blessings. Don't ever change. Keep your essence. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is very inspiring to me. My, probably my favorite is Dear Mama, which is a masterpiece as far as lyrical content and being a, a, as a tribute to someone. But this one is probably one of the other ones too, that you can consider a masterpiece and the way that people think of him as cursing and all that. He says a whole lot more than just a lot of curse words and beating up people and all that kind of stuff. Everything has a context. So you've got to look yeah. at people with context. We hit about 12 hip hop songs. All of them you can find on YouTube and you can watch a video for the reference. Eventually I'll put this in some kind of document, whether in an article or something here in the next week or two, you'll have to reference. You can cast a replay on Twitter and also LinkedIn. And eventually, hopefully in the next week or so, I'll have it up on YouTube. So nice. Nice. anything you got going on KG that people should know about? Yeah. So I'm taking a break from Trap Chat Live. So last week and this week, okay. I put a pause on May, but coming back in June, every Wednesday at two Eastern, I'm live on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, talking talent acquisition, talking career stuff, talking, protecting your peace at work, your mental health at work all kinds of great stuff and let's see i've got oh i just taped an episode of mac pritchard show that'll be coming out oh, in july nice. yeah um, find your dream job find yeah. your dream job we're talking about yeah. resumes i have another youtube that i have to share about resumes <laughs> I'll be doing that. And then for my recruiter friends, HRTX in June, I will be a part of as well as September. Yeah, I think awesome. so. So you've got, your tray is full. It shout is. Out. Yeah, shout out to Mac Pritchard. Yeah. Show about four years. I guess this might be about five years now. Five years ago, I was on this show. I think we talked about how volunteering was useful for your job. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Okay. It was a long time ago, but a shout out to him. Yeah. I've got a bunch of things coming up. I'm not going to even mention them because they're all still in the works. Um, okay. Because one thing happens after another, but people know they can find. I hope you and I will be able to connect again for another creative show in June. Mm -hmm. We will hit up the people okay. and we'll make that announcement. Probably we'll make it sooner than we did this show. I give us some grace when it's a live show because people yeah, just hop I on. Exactly. And people can watch the replay afterwards. And I think that's where most of the audience actually comes from. Is yeah. Play. But in the meantime, thank you very much for joining the Voice of Job. That's the Voice of Job Seekers podcast. And I've been doing this for nine years, going on 10 years soon. I think next, the, in 2023 will be 10 years of this. And I still can't always remember the name of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's my show. Yes. Feel free to also check out my YouTube channel as well. Mark Anthony Dice is looking there. You can always find it. And the live streams are both on hiatus right now, Job Seeker Nation, but you can catch the replays on its own YouTube channels, Job Seeker Nation, which KG has been a part of the vacation. So yeah. I always drag her to stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then the modern job search, check this. We'll be back sometime this summer. Just don't know when, but you can catch all the replays on those particular channels at any time. Peace in the Valley of Love. KG, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And you guys take care.